Yes, well, um, welcome everybody. It's great to all be here together in what I call a sanctuary of sacredness today. It's a very rare event um, having a small group of people together to meet with and be in the company of such a special man as is Mitchell Coombs. Now Mitchell's lineage goes back over 400 years. He comes from a long line of family members who are psychics, professional astrologers, tea readers, etc, etc. In fact, he did his very first prediction at the age of three. And he used to see people standing at the end of the bed when he was a little boy. And he was terrified about this until his mother actually told him that it was simply people who had crossed over who were trying desperately to get messages to their loved ones. So kind of, you know, what was that movie with Patrick Swayze with Whoopi Goldberg? You can imagine how he must have felt as a young kid with all these spirits trying to get through to him when so few people have this ability. At the age of 12, he was given his very, very first tarot deck from his dearly loved and departed uncle, who was an esteemed astrologer. And he used to sit down on his way home from school in an afternoon and read tea leaves with his aunt, uh, his Nana Lucy. So how's that for a heritage? And he's gone from strength to strength since then. At a very, very young age, he's already achieved Australian Psychic of the Year, New South Wales Psychic of the Year. He's been made an honorary lifetime member of the Australian Psychic Association. This guy is something else. Not is he only just a very talented man, he's also a great guy. I mean, we've been lucky enough to spend time with Mitchell and get to know Mitchell. He's funny, he's outrageous, he's hilarious, and he's humble. You wouldn't even know he has this incredible ability. So let's take today, guys, as a special moment in our life that we never forget. Let's make today so special that we can look back and say everybody was touched, everybody walked out realizing the most important thing on this planet, in my opinion, is the understanding, firstly, the recognition, and then the belief that life continues on, that life does not finish here. People like Mitchell Coombs are here to do a very special job. They're not just here to connect us to loved ones who have crossed over, they are here to prove to us as a human race that it's not just the mundane reality that we need to concentrate about. Life has a greater purpose. Life has a much greater meaning. And to the people that we've talked about on our show, that we've talked to, that have had near-death experiences, that have come back to say, you know what? The only thing that matters, the only thing that matters on this planet is that we love each other. And yet, it seems to be the hardest thing for us all to do. It's so simple, yet it's so important. We don't take our jobs with us, our clothes. We don't take our houses with us. We take what we have in our hearts. That's all we take. And yes, we do go on. Life is eternal. And people like Mitchell, they're here to prove it to us. So guys, today, if you don't get a reading, know that synchronistically, we have all been brought together for a reason. That reason is that each and every one of us gets to experience and be in the company of people that have connected with their loved ones today in the proof that life does go on from here. If you don't get a reading, I promise you, somebody next to you or in the other part of the room that will get a reading today, it will resonate with you on some level because it's meant to. It's meant to. So guys, why am I so excited? Because there isn't just 90 people here today, there's 9,000 spirits with us. <laughs> and guys, today, spirit is in the house. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, up. give a big warm welcome to Mitchell Coombs. Are you all excited? Yes. I am really, really, really excited. So I hope that you're excited. Let's let's go back. Uh, we were talking briefly about you started at the age of three. 
but how did it how did it really start? Where, did you freak out as a young little boy thinking, this is strange? <laughs> Look, I wasn't, for me, yes, uh, when I was three, from and really, three and, and maybe even earlier, but I can recall, they tell me that I was having experiences before I was three, you know, my parents and so on. But even when I was, you know, I guess you could say three, even right up until... I was four, I was petrified. I, I was very scared. As a young boy, as a young child, you know, I used to wake in the middle of the night. And for those that know my story, I would often see what I would call green people standing at the end of my bed. And don't ask me why these people appeared to me as green people. I don't know if it was just maybe how I, as a young three-year-old boy, saw the spirit world. But I was so scared. I used to race to my parents and say, the green people are back. I'm scared. I can't sleep. But I was so fortunate to come from a, a gifted family of psychics and mediums. And my mother, who is very well versed in, in mediumship, she'd say to me, Mitchell, do they scare you? Know, are they hurting you? What, what do they say? Are they, are they upsetting you? And, and she said to me that they're not going to harm me and that if I perhaps listen they may have a message and so I begun listening and you know from three right through till even eight or nine I used to sort of unsettle the adults around me at times because I'd often come out with the most profound statements I guess and I've always heard voices I've always seen visions I've always sensed the spirit world it's a very it's very much a natural part of my life uh, I, I can't I, if you said to me what would it be like not to have the spirit world or not to sense our loved ones around us I couldn't tell you because I I'm it's so natural for me I don't walk down the street without often seeing people's loved ones walking beside them you, you know, you'll see the good things, you can sense good things, Yes. but, but, but how do you deal when you see death w with people themselves or perhaps even a shocking accident? Does that pop up at all? It does, but I have to say something here. I don't believe in death. And people say, well, what do you call, you know, a, a mouse that's, you know, been run over by a truck. I say, a mouse that's been run over by a truck. I don't believe in death. Death is an illusion. I believe and I know that our souls continue on. So when I, and I have been with patients of mine that I have done healing with uh, when they've been very sick and I've been very, um, I guess you could say I've been very fortunate to be able to sit with people that are taking their last physical breaths here on the earth. And death to me is very different than how I feel a lot of us view mm. losing a loved one. It's very sad, but we don't die. See, mm. there is no death, you can't die. Doris Stokes was a very famous English medium and she used to oh, always yes. say, you cannot die for the life of you. So you see, it's no good going out <laughs> on a Saturday night, on a Sunday night, having a huge bender and come Monday morning when you've got to be at work at 9 a.m. saying, oh boy, I wish I was dead. Because it's an impossibility. You, you cannot, and the soul is eternal and I hope that today with the connections that I'll be able to make for, for everyone here in the room, you know, for audience members and so on, I hope that I'm able to give you some comfort and reassurance that your loved ones, the number one message from the spirit world is, is that can you please tell them that we didn't die, that we're not dead, that we live on. But are, but are some spirits regretful that they went over too soon? Some people feel, and, and I say people or those in the spirit, they do. Some, sometimes they feel that perhaps they, they wanted to achieve more here, but I can guarantee you that when you realize that for any of us, you know, there's only so much uh, sand in the hourglass for our time here on the earth. And when you realize that, we make every second count, you know, you make every second count. So, Mitchell. Speaking of messages, I think a lot of people are always questioning, how do those messages come to you? Well, that's, see, so how it will work, and you'll see this today, is when I'm tuning into the spirit world, when I'm opening myself up to, to the world of spirit, I, I see, I hear, and I sense. So sometimes I will see visions. Other times I may actually see a person's loved one standing beside them. Other times I will see a light um, over a person's head, and I'll think, oh, there's somebody there for you. And it takes me a little while just to focus in on that light, yeah. to see more of who that person might be for the person perhaps that I'm perhaps going to be giving a message to. Uh, other times I will feel the spirit. Sometimes I will feel physical pains in my body. So I'll feel if, you know, if someone had labored breathing, I may feel that. Or if they, you know, um, had problems walking, I may feel my legs start to freeze over. So I will often feel what they want me to feel. Mitchell, how did you discover, that, and when was it, that you had this gift? I 
think I was closer to five at this stage. So I wasn't too old, but I certainly wasn't young, young, but I was five-ish, somewhere there. And uh, my mother had a friend over for coffee and for tea, and you know, my dad was at work, and that, my mum caught up with all of her girlfriends, I guess, and, and um, back in those days. And there was a lady who I didn't know very well. I think I'd only ever met her, seen her twice, because... And I went up to her this age, and I don't know why I was home that day, because I thought I used to go, I used to go off to, uh, you know, like to a preschool and to care, care, like daycare and things like that. But I went up to her and I placed my hands down near her, her lower part of her tummy, and I said, you have a, a, a little person, you have a baby growing inside you, you have a little person. And, and she said, oh, no, that can't be, don't, uh, you, that's very sweet of you to say. And she was quite, quite patronizing, actually. And she sort of <laughs> said like, oh, you know, no, no, there's, there's no baby, you know, and anyway, so, and mum said to me, what made you say that? I said, I don't know, I just saw a, a person inside. That I, I said to her, actually, that the spirit people told me, my friends in the spirit world, because I, you know, insisted that a place was set at the table for my people, my Did friends. You? Yes, awesome. And uh, that was quite, that didn't go to, down too well but at first. But anyway, um, <laughs> but, but the greatest thing of all was three weeks later, the phone rung and mum answered. And I remember hearing her say, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to say. And I could hear the tone in my mother's voice. And I thought, oh, gee, that doesn't sound so great. And uh, her friend had called and said, how did he know? My husband and I weren't trying for a child. In fact, we were told we couldn't have any children. And I have just found out that I am pregnant. Mm. And yes, and she had a little girl. So, you know, and, and, and again, mum said, how did you know? Like how, you know, because I come from a psychic family, but she was, but what did you see to say that? I said the spirit people told me, and they did. Our loved ones in the spirit often tell us things, and so I hope that you haven't come with secrets at all, because <laughs> I have this tendency to open up a can to, of worms, to and, people, <laughs> and people say to me, I, you know what I say to the spirit? I say, love, you mustn't tell me family secrets because sometimes they tell me things and I don't stop to think. So how do you, like, so you actually do see, and we're not gonna call them spirit, people. Yes, all souls, spirit people, Soul, people spirit in the spirit people. world, but they are people from the spirit world. Yes, I, I do. I, I mean, I should clarify, my first book is called Sensing Spirit because it is the spirit world, yeah. it is spirit. But I believe that our loved ones, you know, they have sustenance, they have, they have substance. They're not, you know, they're just like you and I, but in another dimension, in another realm, in another world. Um, your question is, do I, yes, so sometimes I will see the other world as clearly as I'm seeing you. Other times I will see a shadow or I'll see a silhouette. Sometimes I see them that I can describe very clearly what I'm saying and other times I will just hear fragments or I might hear them talking or I'll hear them say a name and they might say the name of their loved one or they might say the name or their name you see so it works much in that way. Do you ever get overwhelmed by uh, spirit you, you just want your own space you've perhaps done a show or you've been in a performance and you just go for your time rest time and they're still hanging around saying listen you should have said that. Well they're with <laughs> me in the car when I was driving to Sydney the other day and they were your loved ones I've already had two people talking to me that I'm already very strong with here because I'm hearing them you know this morning I could feel the spirit world gathering I don't feel overwhelmed by it um, I have to tell you, I used to worry about how much did the spirit would really see. Um, and if they saw what I thought that they saw, <laughs> I'd start wearing a towel everywhere I went, you know? <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was very concerned. But no, our loved ones don't view our life as a private reality show. They do not, and we have our privacy, and they're very respectful of our privacy. But I will tell you that your loved ones are with you more often than perhaps what some of us may realise. And I often um, wonder about do I that. Feel, do I feel overwhelmed? No, I, I actually count this people in the spirit world are, are amongst my closest friends. And I say, I ne I'm never lonely. I'm never alone. <laughs> I once had a lady, Viv, say, can, Steve, can you please send them back? Send them, I don't want to talk. Can you? I can't. If I open the door, I can't control who comes through. Yeah. But what I will say to you is, is um, not to be afraid. And yes. talk to your loved ones. And sometimes people say, but I don't hear them. But you will. And the number one tip I have for anybody that's wanting to learn to sense the spirit world and become aware, not to become a medium, not to open up the floodgates and feel overwhelmed and all these. Yeah. That's not what's going to happen. But what will happen is if if you have quiet time, and I like to say set aside 10 minutes, to five to 10 minutes each day or each night at the same 
same time if you can. So if you know you put your kids down to sleep, you know you've got from, I don't know, say 8.30 till whatever, you know, you create five minutes for yourself and you say to your loved ones, this is our time. I'm going to sit in this chair or at this table or on this lounge or wherever it may be or lie in this bed. This is our time. And if you would like to come and be with me and share this time with me, then you're more than welcome to. And if you'd like to let me know that you're here with me, you're more than welcome to. If you want to give me a feeling, you're more than welcome to. And then just be with your thoughts for the next five to ten minutes and with your loved one focusing on them mm. and then let go of any expectation because you may find that for the first 20 times of doing that you think I'm not getting anything I don't feel anything I don't feel anything different I don't but it will come and remember we can't force someone in the spirit world to come and be with us and it's not that they don't want to be with us as I said they often are it's that we are not I want to say attuned or sensitive enough to be aware when they are around us. We often overlook the signs. We'll talk about signs later on. Uh, well, we're getting ready for segment number two now. Now, segment number two is going to be about connecting Thank with spirit. You're welcome. And uh, this is where we go into overdrive. So get ready and take a big deep breath and uh, let's just see what we can we can bring in. And also, um, we were just saying now, often when you start, you get people doing some stamping of the feet and a bit of clapping is mm. that correct mm. just to raise the mm. vibration to raise the bit? energies okay. it's a little bit different than other mediums um but i like to create energy and our loved ones respond to our laughter you know i have to tell you our loved ones respond to our laughter and so it's no good sitting there and thinking oh i feel so you know sad and what have you because they respond to our laughter yes we know that we're sad and sometimes we feel that you know but they respond to our laughter when you're happy they're happy but please don't feel that if you are someone that has lost especially a child i've got a little one here talking to me we'll see who 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 they're for in just a moment um but you, you mustn't be uh, feeling that if you're sad that your loved one in heaven is feeling sad because you're sad don't ever put pressure on yourself like that in fact can i do something here can i do something a this bit is, different this okay. is, uh, all right okay this is your show Mitchell. okay we'll do something a little different so what i want you to do is i want you just to take your hands and drop them by your sides I'm going to teach you a little exercise in sensing energy, okay? Because everybody has an energy, and I'm sure many of you here in the audience will be familiar with standing in line at the supermarket or at the post office or even the bank, and someone stands behind you and you think, oh, I can, I can feel that person in my space because their energy has stepped into your energy, into your aura, okay? So we all have an energy. And the energy, of course, our soul has an aura. Our, that's the spirit. The spirit is the aura of the soul. The soul has an aura. So what I'm going to get you to do is to shake your hands. We shake them out like this and just rub your hands together. And what we're doing here is we're, we're developing sensitivity in our, in our palms, in our hands. And then I'd like you to hold your hands about a ruler length apart and very slowly bring them together. It helps if you close your eyes. But as you're bringing them together, just bring your focus to the space that's between those two palms, between your two hands, and see if you can give it a description. How does it feel? Is there a texture? Do you feel a pulsating feeling? Do you feel a pushing and a pulling feeling, like a magnet? Or do you feel you're holding a ball? So you just, you know, shake your hands out, you give them, a, you rub them to activate the chakras, you breathe, remember to breathe, because when we hold our breath, we lose our power. So it's very important to remember to breathe. Okay, and so who here is feeling something in their hands? Let me see a show of your hands. Don't be nervous. A lot of you, many of you. And some of you will say, I'm not feeling anything yet. And that's also quite fine. You know, you've only just tried this for the very first time, but practice and you will start to feel any, well, that's energy. And that's what we're working with today. We're working with the energy of the spirit world. Okay, so let's create energy in the room. So if, I'd like you all, if you're sitting, well, you're all sitting down, to stand up for me. And we're going to bring this house down. We are going to create so much positive energy. Okay, all right. So I'd like you to stamp your feet as loud as you can. Stamping them louder again, louder! More energy! Clap your hands. <laughs> That's wonderful. 